We've got a fighter in here on a fake profile. Darren, I'll beat you in a fight, G. That's right, lad. There's loads of people that can beat me in a fight. Loads of people that can beat me in a fight, lad. You know, it won't make you special. It's not going to make you rocky or nothing, lad, is it, if you beat me? It's not about if you can beat me, it's about the beating you give. Isn't it? You know, if you're going to beat me, you're going to have to give me a f***ing good beating, mate. <laughs> Simple as that. I'm not... Just doesn't stop getting up. Honest. I don't know how I've got it. But I've been danced on a few times and I'm not cunt. That doesn't stop getting up, lads. <laughs> End up in a mess for it. You know, if you just stay down and blag it like you just leave you alone. And start looking for someone else inside. But you know when you keep on getting up and going, come on. <laughs> you start getting pissed off, don't you? You've been there, haven't you? And you're pissed off with that. It's not giving up. And you just want to stop, but you've got to hear. You've got to... Do you understand? I'm that type of... <laughs> yeah, so I'll have a go with you, mate. If you beat me, make sure it's a good beating. Hey? Make sure I know I've been beating off you. <laughs> Oh, you dexy lad. But it's best not to get in that sort of conflict if you can avoid it, mate. Life's not about fighting. It's about loving, caring. All these kids are just caught up in this social media misfit, and that's the intention. You know, we came a long way, mate. Yes, Angela, we came a long way. You know... The generations before us paved the way, so instead of, you know, the worst that it'd go to was a fist fight. That's the worst that it'd go to. If it got out of hand, it'd get to a fist fight. Do you understand what I'm saying? You'd be able to sit down, bam, bam, talk this out, bam, 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 and the majority had got resolved before any violence kicked in. If violence did kick in, it was a fist fight that was resolved on the spot. Him, him, fight, done. Back in the day, there weren't that many people with that many skills, so the fights were even, and that's why the that's why the conflict were more easily resolvable. These days, when you're getting straight, and you've got boxers, MMA's, bare knuckle fighters all fighting with each other on YouTube. What this does, this is giving the kids the opinion is, if you've got a problem with him, tell him you want to fight him. Instead of going, what's your problem, kid? Can we not resolve this without, you know, getting in any conflict? Can we not resolve this before my mates get word of it and it just starts getting erratic and scatty for years? Can't we just correct this now? It's a skill that not many people have got. You know, you need good, you need to be able to negotiate, you need negotiation skills and people skills and talking skills and a lot of these, this generation hasn't got it. All the granddads of the day, years ago, they were always dealing with people on the door or, and when they got into conflict on the door, it was best for them on the door to resolve it through talking instead of having a big madness and chaos on the door while it's queued it up. Do you understand what I'm saying? So them people back in the day had a lot of people skills, could resolve issues by talking and not going towards violence. That you don't get them these days, Scouse English. My dad was a doorman in 051. Trained by bullies today, wimps, says Jacks. Well, he just don't, it's just mad what's going on. Even like the, you can remember years ago, they took the power away from the door firms, didn't they? Do you remember how powerful door firms was? And the door firms were normally ran by like a major family in the city, weren't they? And it was like a family, still wasn't it? They just attacked the families and then attacked the security businesses that they had. Started bringing these daft SCS cards where Bevo down there can be working on the worst club in for Liverpool if he wants to. Do you understand what I mean? No experience, hasn't got a flu. The way they were getting around that though, when they first came out, them daft cards, 
The rules and the regulations surround it didn't prevent you from working inside. So you could wear inside, work inside as a glass collector or some daft like that. So all the doormen who had criminal records, you couldn't get these SCS cards. Because the majority of the doormen had, had criminal records and that. But when they couldn't get the CS, to, to get round that, like a little loophole, they'd still work in the club. Yes, LMC, Harvey, Robbo, John Russell, hope you're all good, mate. Let's get rid of this spell and... But most of the old school gangsters that you're even listening to now, or you're, uh, you're uh, come out of my mouth, they started off in security. You had some drug dealers that got into security, do you understand? But the majority of the old school gangsters, it was all about door security, club security. Hi, Mr. G. Hope you're well. I'm sorry, mate. You okay? Are you tired, as No, lad, I just need a shower. I was going to get a shower earlier on, but I thought I'll get one before I go out the door, which will be in a few hours. <coughs> Gee, mate, Muslim here. No respect, bro. Try saying, lad. No respect sent back to you, lad. No way is I'm touched by knife crime now, is it? Everywhere is touched by knife crime now. Happy days, then, no gays. Let's get in there. Oh, yeah. G made Muslim here, no respect. Illuminated one, hope, hope, hope it's good. Hope what's good? Life. Life's what you make it, lad. Just know that you're making it. The sooner you realise that you're making your life, the better, mate. You don't realise it. And then you've got to start making it later on. But you're repairing it. You're knocking it down and starting it again, mate. So be careful what sort of life you're making yourself. How many days a week do you wear out? Depends, you know, shame, lad. Depends on how I'm feeling, mate. I'm getting into these moods, you know, these hours. Where I am now. I always do this round these months. Would you still convert to Islam, says Dan? <coughs> what do you mean, still? Would you still convert to Islam? Where did the still come from? What me? What makes you think I'm still converting? That's basically what you're saying. Why would I want to convert to Islam when I'm quite happy with Christ? If you're, you know, if you're, if you're not happy with Christ, if you don't, if, if you don't think Christ has given you the the purpose and the goals in life, then seek other prophets to follow you know if you need to go and follow the scriptures of Muhammad go and follow them la. participate in that embrace it you know if Christ isn't giving you what you need then search seek and you will find I don't need the, the reason I won't revert to Islam is because I'm not a traitor that's it that's not hating on anything. That's me telling you my values and where I am. I will not turn my back on Christ because I'm not a traitor, bitch. I'm a man of Christ, not a man of the church. Two different mindsets. Got rid of this little helmet. Probably wants to get enough so we can go live. But there's no, you know, I've contemplated it. Get you in a twist. I've sat there for like a good year, 18 months, I think, contemplating reverting to Islam. And what people thought about me, or never even came into the decision making, 
We ain't about that. The only thing why I never reverted was because I wouldn't turn me back on Christ. That's it. Everything else, the way you think, the way the ideology, it's all similar. There's, there isn't much difference, to be honest with you, between men of Christ and men of Islam. There ain't, there, ain't, there ain't no difference, to be honest with you. There's a few pivotal things, but you don't worry about that. Why? Because we're not at the end of the world. We're not ever going to be at that place where there's a religious war. There might be loads of little creatures wanting, wishing, hoping, but it'll never come to that. There's more division within the Islamic world than what there is between Christians and Islam. Do you understand that? It's not just Christians and Islam that have had differences in the world. You know, there's, lo there's loads of beef going on when it comes to religion and cultures. Loads of beef. Lo you know, there's loads of um, racism, discrimination. All that still exists. I don't, I don't know why you think it doesn't. You've got to understand, isn't it? It's, it's the environment. And this is what you just need to realise, you know... You can be a practice Christian in the United Kingdom and then you can be a practice Christian in Greece. Two different ways of practicing it. You can be a Coptic Christian from Russia and then you can be a Christian from London. Two, two completely different forms of practicing um, Christianity there. You know, if... Coptic Christians are like um, Coptic Christians are like the deepest I don't know like who's the deepest in Islam I don't want to say the most extreme because it's not it's not really in this day and age it's considered that but the way they practice it it wasn't considered that Max saying late one night, yeah, it's payday, kidder. Long day. People who believe there is a God, they have never looked at this earth. Have you looked at this earth? From what? Google. Yes, hull, hull. What you see in this beautiful earth of yours, mate? I always tell people this, um, if you've got an imagination, which you all have, if you've been using it right, this won't be hard to imagine, what I'm going to ask you to imagine. So imagine this world with absolutely no man-made substances on it at all. Just think about that. So no concrete. No steel, no, no big buildings, no tarmac, no, no planes, no cars, no nothing like that. Nothing, no breeze blocks, no steel fences. What would the world look like? Bright, glowing, twenty-four hour daytime. In some places. All the waters crystal blue, all the skies crystal blue, all the plants, all the trees flourishing, all the tropical animals that you'd only see in certain parts of the world right now, all over the world, African great parrots, every parrot you can have in a cage just flying round. It's paradise, isn't it? It's paradise. Think about it. Think about how colourful, vibrant and clean it would be. In paradise, if you've got an image of paradise, that is it. And it's basically that shout. Hell on earth. Bruce Robinson, say where would everyone go? Don't know, do you, mate? You probably wouldn't get as much. 
because you'd only be a particular diet. You probably wouldn't be farting as much or all that mad coming out of our bodies right now wouldn't be as frequent if we were living accordingly. You know, them animals that we running around that planet, I've just told you, with no cars, no concrete, all them cows, all them sheep, all them things, all them things. Imagine how vibrant their communities would be. But we're eating them. Is that right? Does that seem right to you? Think about it. Look at us now. <clears throat> You've got people chopping any animal you can get up on telly, cooking it up, taking the liver out, taking the heart out, breaking legs off, all this, man. And you just think it's normal. It's how far we've gone. That's not normal. Look how we're living, look what we're eating, look what we're breathing. This planet, before whoever started controlling it, must have been beautiful, wasn't it? You see the Amazon forests and all this. Yes, yeah, well, that's it. Darren, I missed you. Take care. God bless. Nice one. Peace. Peace out, mate. Do you think they will get DK back to Ireland? You don't know about Daniel Kinahan. What happened is some of his fame just being sentenced now. They done well then, three, didn't they? How well did they do there, mate? Some call it a blessing, some call it a lesson. I'll call it them both if they don't come back for them in a few years to get them with bigger sentences. Do you know what I'm on about them Burns? That bomber and that Burn kid, that Liam Burn. Well, it is what it is. He's got a result, that Liam Burn. There was a kid from Liverpool, the Lambs mate, and that was the connection in Liverpool. He got nicked with them as well. He's got a little bit of a jail sentence with them. But... It is what it is. Everyone's, everyone deserves a second chance to repair their lives, mate. And if a little bit of jail instigates that in these people, good. It is what it is. You know, you've got to think about the children of these men. So see that, let's look at this Liam Byrne, for example. Just, I'm not hating on him, he is what he is. Daniel Kinnan, they're just all because of Daniel Kinnan. But let's... I'm speaking on them like any other podcast is speaking on them now. Like updating on their cases and that. I'm just the same as them. There's no really going at them here. It's just me speaking about the case. So think about how much jail they got for the offence, mate. Wow. That's a result. Think about what they've done. It weren't just straight possession of a firearm, it was planting firearms and trying to manipulate the system to get lesser jail sentences. And guess what? They ended up with five years and three years. And, and they had like 15 ARs, assault rifles. <coughs> nice one, little one. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's a blessing, mate. That Liam must have been sat in jail with them offences and these allegations towards him, thinking to himself, 30. Battered, head battered, head totally gone. But you've got to think about his son. You know, imagine that kid and his dad's just whipped out of his life for a 30. This kid's life's going to go messy on him. And if he, have, if he has a beard... His life with his beard been messy because of the dad gone away for a 30. There's loads of kids in our cities now whose lives are being destroyed because the dads are going away for three years. There's children's lives being destroyed because the dad goes to prison for a little supply and charge. And they don't, they don't understand it, do they, these young lads, the young dads? So hopefully that Liam Burns had a little wake-up call there. That's like looking at life sentence and getting a blessing to understand. That's like me going on my trial like I was, getting told you're getting a 35 recommendation if you're convicted, like I was told for years and years. 
getting convicted and then from nowhere he doesn't give me a life sentence. You've had a blessing there, mate. You've had a second chance in life. Don't f*** that up. That's my motto. <laughs> you know what I mean? That Liam Burns had exactly the same. You've had a second f*** all day, kid. Don't f*** that up. David saying a second chance. That's what it is. That's what I'm saying. From the get-go, you're making a life. Understand that. Because if you don't understand that, you're making a life that you've got to knock down and start again if you want any peace. If you want peace of mind at the end, you've got to f*** down and start again. And that's what I'm doing. I'm in the process of making mine. I know I haven't made it easy on myself, but that's just the way it goes. You know, you're going to have struggle, you're going to have adversity when you're leaving that shite behind. You're going to have things clinging on. You're going to have a lot of energy that's still attached and you've got to detach it. It's a process. But it's about being consistent. Having the willpower to continue on this path, mate. Don't get greedy. Don't let the material, don't let the offers of material drag you away. You know, don't let anyone's other hatefulness drag you into their little ways of being. Stay on your path. You're going to have your problems. You don't need any more. Every one of you is on that little path of life. Even if it's a good path. Even if it's a path of recovery. Even if it's a path of reformation. Path of crime. You're all going to have your own little problems. You don't need to invite any more in. Does that make sense? So say you're committing crime, right? On your little path of crime, you are going to get certain adversity coming into it, guaranteed. And your life's going to be a little bit up and down. Depending on who you're mixing with in this life of crime, depends on what other problems is coming your way in this path. So look, it's like anything. If I start committing crimes today and start leading that path of life of crime by myself, solo, lone wolf, do 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 do, I'm gonna get a set of problems guaranteed. Doesn't matter how careful I am. Doesn't matter how observant or vigilant I am in this life of crime. You're guaranteed to get particular problems coming your way. And you'll deal with them, you'll be able to deal with them, you'll carry on, you might get a little stint in jail, but it's all your own problems. You're dealing with them. When you're part of this group, your little line of problems has turned from five possible um, obstacles to 50. Just like that. So now your path of, your path of crime now is a lot more difficult because you're attached to this group. You know, if he has an obstacle that he can't handle and it goes a bit scatty, it's now your obstacle. And this is the way it works with your group. You know how it is. If I'm with you, I'll die for you. I'll go to jail for you. I'll kill for you. All them shouts is what got prison with. All them shouts is what gets you put in prison. Yes, Stephen. And he always comes back, doesn't it, to that group thinking? That way of thinking, like, that's dangerous for you, mate. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't be thinking that way. Honest to God, you need to keep your individuality or your individuality. Do you understand what I'm saying? You need to keep that uniqueness about yourself. You need to be able to think for yourself. And you might think that you think for yourself, but when you're seeking the approval, you're not thinking for yourself. So if you sit there and go, today I'm going to the gym, but I'm going, let's see what my man's doing. You're not thinking for yourself. You're group thinking. This is what I'm trying. It doesn't seem like much, does it? But trust me, in a bigger picture, it's a lot. You're giving, you're giving up your, you're giving up your self worth, your self responsibility, your uniqueness, your identity. 
you know, when you start thinking like that. And it's dangerous for you. With that with that sort of with that group thinking, peer pressure exists a lot. You know, when you start if you're not on that group thinking, peer pressure kicks in until you're on that group thinking. This is what happens when you start mixing in groups. You know, the peer pressure makes you think like We're doing this, we're doing this. I can't be asked doing that. Well, what are you going to do? And they're all still come now. You're not coming with us. Well, why can't I come with us? Because you're not doing what we're doing. Yeah, but you said, did it, we're still, nah, you're not coming with us. That's peer pressure. Okay, then I'll do it with you. Peer pressure. Up. Now, that little thing where they've broke your wall of protection down. You know where you're standing there going, nah, I'm not going. And I'm going, look at you, you know, get, nah, I'm not going. You know where you're sticking to your values saying, no, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. And then eventually, oh, go on then. That's it, mate. You're just open now. You're open for them to go in and just like, you're thinking like us, you're doing, you're dressing like us, you're listening to our music, you're eating this, you're smoking this weed. You just lost for months because they broke in and just got you with peer pressure. The day before you got out, was you fevered up? What do you mean, fevered up, sick? No. I had big plans for the day before I got out of I was in Forest Bank. They tried their hardest to derail it, changed my release dates. I had to fix that in the last four months. Storm match wouldn't let me go to Billy's funeral. In the last year of my sentence, no storm mad trying to derail me. So we had everything planned. You know, we tried the hardest to shift the date, release date, to get me another charge, make me try to provoke me into going off in the office, you know, fighting with them so they could give me another charge or something. Come to the day before, 21st of June 2016. Yeah, 2016, 21st of June. That was my release date. I'm already prepped it for like a month. People picking me up. Clothes where we're going to get me clothes. Little gaffer of brass, as you do. All that man stuff. Had everything in place. Get back, see me ma, see this, see me nan, see... All, you know, all this sort of stuff. As you do, because you've been away from them for years. The morning went normal. Went to the gym, come back, done the savoury, dished the food out on the savoury, went behind my door. Hear all jingling, which is security, you know, all the keys bursting onto the wing, tsh, all coming up the stairs, tsh, bang, they're at my door, security governor, gym screws, you're getting shipped out, where am I going, we can't tell you, why can't you tell me, we can't tell you, security reasons. <laughs> Down to reception. Put in a sweat box with a van to Preston. Landed in Preston the night before it was meant to be released. Why am I here? We can't tell you. Can you have a phone call? No. Well, what's what? We'll let you know in the morning. Took me to the segregation unit, banged me in a cell, no telly, no phone call, none of me property, two chicken blankets. Freezing cold in the seg, few plant pots down there chatting. So I just struggled to get my head down. No one knew where I was. Family are end family going to be going. Whoever was going to Forest Bank to get me the next day. All this planning and all that, they just ruined it on me. Five o'clock in the morning, which is unusual. The segregation door opens. I'm thinking I'm getting fate arrested for some. Bollocks or something, you know, with the parole hearings and there's all the intelligence support. Oh, they're going to stitch me with something. Get to reception, you've got four suits there from Merseyside Police Prevention Unit or something they call themselves. And 
they had the big device on them and it was a tracking device called Little Billy or Little Joe Bill or something like that they called it and I was the first inmate this is fact, this is real, this is fact I was the first inmate in the whole country to be released and have a tracking device installed on them a tracking device isn't like a tag a tag you've got a perimeter and if you step at that perimeter at a certain time, it'll set an alarm off. A tag's just like your phone. A, a tracker, it's just like your car, a phone. Everywhere you go, they know you're going. So they've put this thing on my ankle and then took me to this hostel in Blackburn, high-risk probation hostel. And then life just got messy, mate. Life just got horrible, mate. Horrible one. And I had that, I had that tracking device on my foot for six and a half months. Six and a half months I had this thing on my ankle, mate. Tracking device. Everywhere I went, they knew where I was. They knew if I was running. They knew if I was taking drugs. Don't this thing on my ankle could tell them. It was mad. Oh, no. I don't know whether they had microphones and probably did that, didn't they? Yes, Callum, a nice one, mate. Yeah. 